Hello everyone. One of the most important causes of maternal mortality in Zambia is uterine rupture. And the reason that women rupture is because most of the time they were attempting to have a vaginal delivery after they've had a cesarean section. So not all women are suitable to having a vaginal delivery after a cesarean section. So in this tutorial we'll discuss how is it that you're going to choose women for a vaginal birth after they've had a cesarean section, also known as VPAC. As you are aware, cesarean section is one of the most common operations everywhere in the world. In Zambia, the rates vary from 2% to 5% and maybe 10% in some, in some, uh, in, in instant cases, in some cases. But generally, the cesarean sections that we do are low. Compared to places like China, for example, uh, Argentina, uh, Egypt, they have half of their women, 50%. 46% delivering by cesarean section. Now, birth after one previous cesarean section carries at least a 1% risk of uterine rupture. And the rupture comes with its problems, such as need for blood transfusion, may end up with a hysterectomy, maternal morbidity, maternal mortality, uh, compromised babies, and even fetal death. So it's got, it's got its own problems, a uterine rupture. And women in Zambia rupture at all levels of care, unfortunately. Whether it be at home, they can rupture at a health post, they can rupture at a clinic, they can rupture at a first level, second level, right up to a tertiary institution. Women rupture in Zambia. And women with one previous cesarean section have a 70% chance of a successful VPAC. So that is a lot of women that we could give a chance for a successful vaginal birth after cesarean section. So our job, our job is to strictly select the women that qualify for VPAC so that we don't end up with a hysterectomy or blood transfusion or a maternal death. So which women have got a chance of a successful VBAC? Women that, women that have had a prior vaginal delivery. Let's say a woman had a successful vaginal delivery in her first pregnancy. Then the second pregnancy, she had a cesarean section. In her third pregnancy, she's got an increased chance of having a successful feedback because she had one prior vaginal delivery. The same applies for a woman who's had a prior feedback, prior successful feedback. They've got a higher chance of having another successful feedback. One thing we need to be careful there with women with high parity. What do we mean? Take for example a woman has a cesarean section in her first pregnancy. Then she had successful VBAX in the second and in the third pregnancy. As she goes to the fourth pregnancy, fifth pregnancy, she's entering the zone of high parity and the, the risk of rupture increases as the number of pregnancy increases. So VBAC is safe up to a certain point that a woman becomes of high parity. Spontaneous labor, you know, a labor where you didn't have to induce is a good is a good one to succeed for vaginal delivery. A favorable cervix, how do you know that the cervix is favorable? We use the bishop score. The bishop score measures certain parameters on the cervix to detect or to predict the suitability of a vaginal delivery. What are those parameters? It could be the position, the consistency of the cervix, the effacement, 
or the length of the cervix, the dilatation and the station of the cervix. So the, look, the position may be anterior, may be posterior, or it may be in the middle. So each of these parameters is given a certain score. For example, if the position is anterior, the score is given 2. If the position is posterior, the score is 0. If the dilatation is 0, the score is 0. If the dilatation is 3, the score is 1. If the station is negative 2, the score is 1. So once you aggregate those scores, they're supposed to be either less than 7 or more than 7. When that score is less than 7, that cervix is not favorable for vaginal delivery. When the score is more than 7, the cervix is favorable. Consent probably should have been the first thing that I should have talked about here. Whenever you are going to have a vaginal birth after caesarean section, there should be a good discussion on all these risks that we are talking about. You should have a good discussion with your patient. Non-recurring indication if in the first in the previous pregnancy she had a cesarean section for a breach and the baby is cephalic this time around the chances of success are high interpregnancy interval of at least 24 months or two years or more there's a lot of discussion around the interpregnancy interval some will talk about 18 months some may even talk about six months but we can talk about those uh, issues academically. But the most practical, the most practical and acceptable interpregnancy interval in our, in our setting is two years or 24 months. And the caesarean section, the prior caesarean section should have been a lower segment caesarean section. And I want to amplify a little bit there on the lower segment caesarean section. If you look at the diagram that we have here, a lower segment caesarean section is done, as the name implies, in the lower part of the uterus. Eh? So when we're talking about a lower segment caesarean section, it's got nothing to do with the incision on the skin. We're talking about the incision on the uterus. In this case, the incision on the uterus is in the lower segment. Eh? It can be transverse or it can be vertical you look at this incision is in the lower segment but it is vertical so this is still a lower segment cesarean section this one here is a classical because it is done in the upper part of the uterus and the upper part of the uterus is thick with muscle and the healing there is poor so because of that a classical cesarean section is not a good a, a woman who's at the classical cesarean section is not a good candidate for a repeat cesarean section. So now let's look at women who've got a decreased chance of a successful feedback. Recurring indication, a woman who's had a CPD in the previous caesar and has a CPD now will probably have to go for cesarean section. Two or more cesarean sections you will see literature, maybe from Canada or other parts in the Western world, where women with three previous cesarean sections are given a chance to try the labor. In your setting, in our setting here in Zambia, two previous caesar and above are not allowed to labor. Yeah? You may hear a story here and there about someone who delivered after two previous caesar that is a fluke, that is chance, and that is luck. But ideally, ideally, two previous Caesar and above are not supposed to labor. History of a hysterotomy. A hysterotomy is, a, is an operation that is done on the uterus before them. Right? So if you, do, if you do an operation that you may think is a caesarean section, but if it is done, before term, I'm sorry, before age of viability, less than 28 weeks. That one is a hysterotomy. And at that time, the lower segment has not yet formed. Eh? 
the lower segment has not yet formed so what you are cutting even if you are cutting in the lower part of the uterus is just thick muscle so in that case that hysterotomy may as well be compared or equal to a classical cesarean section and of course a history of a classical cesarean section um, which we've discussed the difference between a classical and a lower segment cesarean section wound infection how do you get that history simple you just ask the woman if in a previous in a previous uh, operation she had pus coming from the wound if there's a history of having pus coming from the wound probably she had prolonged labor probably she had extensions and that extensions of the cesarean section wound and that predisposes her to rupture in the current pregnancy transverse lie in a previous caesar transverse lie delivery of a transverse lie is very difficult probably was not a lower segment probably it was a j incision or a classical incision not a good candidate for a repeat cesarean for a repeat uh, vaginal birth macrosomia big baby of course when there's a big baby uh, you may not want to uh, try vaginal delivery obese women women with short stature um, increased maternal age that is more than 40 years of age gestation age more than 41 weeks uh, which of course we're going in the range of post deaths induction of labor a note of induct on induction of labor in reality we don't want to induce labor here in zambia uh, and yeah take that as you know important we don't want to induce labor in women with a previous caesar here in zambia you may hear again you may hear of stories of people who have induced labor in women with a previous cesarean section they may even get away and have a good maternal and fetal outcome but it is very risky to induce labor to use prostaglandins such as misoprostol or to argument labor with oxytocin these are no go for for us here in our environment short interpregnancy interval of course less than less than 24 months is not um, women with short interpregnancy interval are not good candidates for a vaginal birth after a cesarean section so some women may just repeat may just benefit from a repeat cesarean section there's there's a good number of women that will just benefit for you taking them straight for cesarean section without going through the vaginal birth so you know you must adhere to this criteria that we've talked about every time that you're going to choose women that are going to try the labor after a previous cesarean section so that was vaginal birth after cesarean section thanks so much for listening and i'll see you in the next one